Yo, what's going on, man? Hey, I wanted to get you guys this video, man. Uh, I love you so much. I waited till I got home, got some quiet. Wanted to do it for you, man. Yo, this is the Solution Keys. Man, hey, look at it, replay it, share it with a friend, share it with somebody else in somebody else's class. I don't care. All right? I just want y'all to pass, all right? Pass this exam. This assessment for you to go on, guys. Hey, I hope it helps. I hope you like it. So first, I'm going to start here with number one, guys. Um, one thing I want to point out to you is that I wanted to cover is um, this right here, man. I want to talk about, first of all, before we even do it, one radical. I want to talk about these values right here. Um, not I, I'm sorry. But perfect squares, okay? One square is one. Two square is two. I'm sorry, good night, look at me. It's four. Four, okay? Three squared, nine. Four squared, 16. Five squared is 25, all right? And so on and so forth like this. So what I did was I listed out all the perfect squares, all right? All these perfect squares, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. I listed out all those perfect squares, guys. All right, and the reason I did that was because um, we're gonna use these to solve all these radicals, okay? So, I'm gonna click back to that on a consistent basis uh, for explaining stuff. So this first example here, guys, we have eight times the square root of negative 88. Guys, you can't have the square root of a negative number, okay? So of course you've got to separate uh, the actual whole number from the negative, factor out the negative one, okay? Don't forget this. Now. Let's go ahead and cover this. We know that the square root of negative one equals i, okay? That's universal, that doesn't change. So right now, before I do anything else, I'm going to factor this one, okay? So I have eight times the square root of 88. Um, but before I rewrite that, guys, I need to figure out which perfect square is a factor of 88. All right, so if I go back to my perfect square chart, 88 is divisible by one of these numbers, guys. All right, and I'm going to say 4. All right, 4. I'm going to say this one. And the reason I say 4 is because, now I chose 4 because 4 times 22 is 88. All right. Now, um, when we simplify this, you have 8 times uh, this right here, guys, square root of 4 is 2. All right. And the square root of 22, guys, the factors of that is 11 and 2, right? Neither one of those are prime. Excuse me, neither one of those are fact. Neither one of those are perfect squares. I'm sorry, guys, it's late. Neither one of those are perfect squares. So I know that I can keep this. All right, I don't, those are prime. Both of those are prime. So there's no need for me to simplify that, okay? But I'm going to simplify that as I. I'm going to leave this as radical um, 22. All right, because this doesn't simplify. But anyway, this right here, 8 times 2 is 16. So 16i square root of 22 is your final answer, right? Okay. For this next example, square root of negative 169, well, that one, guys, um, we know if you re resort back to your table, um, 13 squared is 169. So going back over here, if you do this right, we know that 169 is a perfect square, so if we factor out the negative 1, right, like so, then we see that the square root of 169 is 13, and the square root of negative 1 is i. All right, so there's that answer. Okay, the square root of 96. The square root of negative 96, excuse me. Again, we're going to start by factoring out the negative. So you have square root of 96 times the square root of negative 1. Now, we need to see what perfect square is a factor of 96, okay? So I'm going to go back to my chart, all right? Sorry, guys, I keep flipping, but I want you to see how I'm using this. 
96 is divisible by one of these perfect squares. All right. Um, if I did four, let's see, four times 24 is 96. But I know there's a perfect square in this because that's eight times three. So there's a perfect square still in this. Uh, four, four, and six. So I want to use four. I'm going to go bigger. Let's try 16. 16 times 6 is 96. All right, cool. So 16 will work, guys, because, again, this right here, that's 2 times 3. Those both are prime. All right, so anyway, even if you don't think about that, 16 is a perfect square. 6 is not. All right, I can, there's a square root here. There's not a square root there, so I'm going to use 16 and 6. All right. So back over here, I go. Bear with me. And let's shade to the right. Oh, too far. There we go. All right. So, um, square root of 96, I'm going to factor into 16 times the square root of 6 times the square root of negative 1. All right. Square root of 16 is 4. The square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 6 stays the same as the square root of 6. That doesn't change. Okay. Now, right here. Don't let this one half confuse you guys. All right, it's not tricky at all. It's just one half. All right. Now the square root of 64. 64 is a perfect square. So if we factor out the negative, right, then we know that this is a perfect square. So the square root of 64 is eight. All right, and the square root of negative one is i. So now you have one half times eight. Well, think about it, guys. What's half of eight? All right, if I had eight bucks and I gave half to someone. How much did I give them? Must half of eight, four. All right, so it's four times i, four i. Okay. Now understand the difference between one through four and five, six, seven, and eight. Guys, see these? These are not equations. Equation means there's an equal to sign. There's these have equal to signs. These do not. So there's no plus or minus here. No equal sign. No plus or minus. Down here though, there are equal signs. So we're going to have plus or minus. So let's go ahead and dig in on the first example. This first one right here, guys, we're going to uh, solve for x. We're going to isolate x. We're going to subtract 75 on both sides. Like that. So 0 minus 75 is negative 75. So I have 3x squared equals negative 75. Now I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So I'm going to put x squared over here because that cancels equals negative 75 divided by 3 is um, negative 25. Now remember, we have an equal sign. So we're going to end up with two answers. Two answers kind of have plus or minus, okay? So I'll take the square root here, square root here. All right, the square and the square root cancels. I'm going to put x. And over here, I have plus or minus the square root of 25. Now, if you remember, um, Oh, I'm sorry, negative 25. Sorry about that. So if you remember, um, negative 25, guys, well, 25 is a perfect square. All right, remember in the last couple of examples, we factored out the negative, so you have x equals plus or minus the square root of 25 times negative one. Well, the square root of 25 is five, so x equals plus or minus five, and the square root of negative one is i. So here's our final answer right here. <clears throat> on this side, we have one half of x squared plus uh, 12 equals negative 20. I want to go ahead and subtract 12 on both sides. So you have one half of x squared equals negative 32. All right, negative, negative, add them up to get negative. Now, see how this says one half of x squared? Well, this is division. So if I move it over here, I'm going to multiply it. All right, or check this out. How do I make the 2 go away? Multiply by 2, right? So I multiply by 2 on this side. So I'm left with x squared because that's just 1 times x squared. 1 times anything is itself, right? Like 1 times 3 would be 3. So 1 times x squared would still be x squared. Anyway, that had nothing to do with the problem. So over here, I got negative um, 32 times 2. Well, that's going to be a negative 64. Now, I got the equal sign, so I'm going to take the square root on both sides, which means I'm going to have plus or minus when I take the square root. So you end up with that canceling to have x remaining, and you have plus or minus 
the square root of 64. And guys, I'm gonna go ahead and take out the negative one, like that. Now, what's the square root of 64? You have um, eight, and what's the square root of negative one? I. So x equals plus or minus that. All right, let me erase up because it's getting cluttered. I just want to have space. Now, this one here, we're going to subtract 40 on both sides. So that gives us 16 x squared equals negative 81. Well, if we take that 81 and divide by 16 on both sides, all right, I'm going to put x squared equals negative 81 over 16. Now, well, you've got to take the square root on both sides, of course. All right, so I will have plus or minus, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 81 over 16. And of course, I factored out, you guessed it, the negative 1. See that negative right there? we got to factor it out, okay? Now, some of you guys write this fraction and you say, man, 16 doesn't divide into 81 evenly. You're right, it doesn't. So we're just going to honor the fact that 81 is a perfect square and 16 is a perfect square. And we're going to take the square root of both of those. So you have x equals plus or minus the square root of 81 is 9. And the square root of 16 is 4. And the square root of negative 1 is i. All right, so there's our two answers right there. All right, if you don't believe me, look back at our chart. 9 squared is 81. Um, that was it. Oh, yeah, over 16. 4 squared is 16. So that was good. All right, let's get back to where we were. Hmm. Let's delete that line. Okay. Now, I'm going to clear this off again because I want more space. All right. Now, lastly, for 1 through 8, right here, subtract 19. Boy, that's a terrible math. So you have 5x squared equals negative 19. Now divide by 5 on both sides. So you have x squared equals negative 19 over 5. Now, of course, I'm left with the square root. So I'm going to take, or square, excuse me. So I'm going to square root both sides. So I will have plus or minus. So x equals that cancel. So it's just x equals plus or minus the square root of um, 19 over 5 and the square root of negative 1. Now, to conclude this, guys, simple. 5 and 19 don't divide even. Unlike the last problem, 19 is not a perfect square, nor is 5. So we're just going to leave that, okay? So we have x equals plus or minus the square root of, um, actually, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to write it that way. x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 is i. And then we're going to leave this. i times the square root of 19 over 5. The reason I did that again is because, again, that's not a perfect square. That's not a perfect square. I can't take the square root of those. So I'm going to leave it as it is. Okay, so there we go. Plus or minus i times the square root of 19 divided by 5. Hey, yo, so look, listen, I'm approaching the 15 minute mark on this video. All right, I'm going to work through the i's very quickly, and then I'm going to conclude it, and I'll pick up the rest on another video. Okay, so let's get through the i's. For this first one, remember what I always told you take i to the 14th right now. All right, we're just gonna look at that part. Well, if I take 14 and divide it by four, it gives me uh, 3.50, or 3.5. Well, if you look back at your i chart, all right, hold on one second, let me go to the i chart. So here's our i chart, all right, I came to the i chart, well, I made an i chart, all right, but, um. Our I chart tells us that if we see, remember the problem we were just looking at? It said uh, I to the 14th and it gave us 3.5. Well, remember the quarter method. 0.5 is two quarters. All right, that's right here. 
Okay, pi squared, two quarters, two quarters is negative one. So when I go back to the problem, let me scroll down. All right, we see that i to the 14th equals um, negative one, right? Because again, 50 cent is two quarters, so i squared, that's negative one. So i to the 14th equals negative one. So see how we have negative six times um, i to the 14th, all right? Well, since we know that that equals negative one, we can say that i, we can say that negative six times negative one, because remember, this right here is negative one. So when you multiply those guys, we get positive six. All right, so nine is positive six. Over here for 10, uh, 204. All right, we take 204, I to 204, and we take 204 and divide by four. All right, that's going to give us 52. All right, that's 52 with no decimal. It's 52 even. See how there's no decimal right here? Over here, it had a decimal. When I did that, it was 3.5. Over here, there's no decimal. So that's zero decimals. Well, look at it like this. There's zero decimals, right? No change. So that's just one. So when we solve this one, i to the 204 power is one. All right. Let me go down so you can see it. Man, sorry about that. i to the 204 equals one. Final answer. Okay. Now over here, we have i to the, or 5i raised to the 2,907. So we take that and divide it by four. All right, it's going to give us 726.75. Now ask yourself, how many quarters is 75 cents? Well, 75 cents is three quarters. So if I go back to my eye chart and look at IQ, it's negative one. All right, because three quarters, three, negative one. Now, go right here. We know that I to 2,907 equals um, negative one. Oops, I mean equals negative I. All right, we have five times negative i. Well, that's going to be negative five i. All right, because again, three quarters. All right, i cubed is negative i. All right, so we said this is negative i. Therefore, five times negative i is negative five i. Okay. Now, let's dig right into the last problem uh, that I'm probably going to do in this video. It's somewhere in there. There we go. Clear ink from page. Now, this one, 16,441. If I take that and divide it by four, you end up with 4,110.25. All right, well, that's one quarter. All right, out to the first. So we have five times of this number right here, but we know that this number right here, I right, to the 16,000. 441 is the same thing as um, I, all right? I, because that's the first is I, it's one quarter. So five I equals, five times I equals five I, all right? Now I'm gonna stop the video right here. I'm gonna um, go ahead and I'll start part two, all right? So catch the next video, all right? <laughs>